toys, TV shows, comics and collecting and superheroes. There's no end to the useless stuff they know. But don't call them geeks, they're just regular jokes. Welcome to the Regular Joe's Podcast. I'm Dave Pisani. I'm Barry Kay. And I'm Pleasant. Todd Pleasant. Oh, it just doesn't work when your your first name's an adjective. Okay, your last name's an adjective. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't work. Uh, we're talking about James Bond today, everybody. Um, there will be spoilers, so no time to die. By the time you listen to this, if you listen to it when it comes out, it's got to be at least three weeks. So, yeah. If, I know it's in the theaters, and some people don't want to go in the theaters, and I respect that. Go during the middle of the day. Stop and go see it. You should see it. Um, but we will spoil it. We kind of have to. And, you know, you're spoiling it, but I haven't even seen it, and I'm okay with that. But So, you know, and, and I'm not afraid to go to a theater. I just haven't had time. So Barry and, and, graciously agreed to let us spoil it. Yeah, I'm going to let you guys spoil it, even though I haven't seen it, which is and, fine. And let's say this, this is a time commitment. Because this is the longest Bond film ever. Yeah, yeah, isn't it as long as like it's almost as long as like Endgame, right? I think it's um, two hours and forty three minutes. Yeah, so, I think. I mean, it is. It's, 20, it's, oh, it's long. That's a lot of Bond. Put, put it this way: there are two Bond films that combined are shorter than this. So really, yeah, yeah, they have there's, to be. There's actually some early short films. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. So we're going to talk about that. Um, check. Uh, oh, no, there's not. Any, um, ooh, will we have pictures this week? I know. Check out our Instagram, but I don't think we're going to have pictures this week. So um, we'll find something to post pictures. We'll post something up. But keep on looking at our Instagram because we're putting up all certainly all the what's in the boxes uh, after uh, when we record by the time you listen to this. So check all that out. I, I want to ask, I know we're going to go into random. I want to ask a question. Did anyone watch more last week? La Brea and Todd, Barry, I'm not counting the two minutes we watched La Brea <laughs> ghosts or why the last man. I just finished the second episode of why the last man. And I'll, Barry, I'll I, I have watched some more of why the last man. And I, I think in random we may talk about why the last man. Oh, right? that's where I was just yeah. going to go. And guess what? It's been canceled. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but you know what? The articles say canceled on FX. They don't even say canceled. They no, say- no, 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 no. So they, uh, there was an article that just came out tonight that I saw. Yeah. It is canceled. Um, apparently, so they hired a showrunner for the show. They worked on it for years. They fired those showrunners and replaced them. Yeah. And then they made this the, the season, and they reshot a ton of it. And I guess this cast was originally cast in 2018, and they don't really like the direction that the show went in because it was very different from what the original yep. source material was. And they couldn't decide if they wanted to retool and recast and what they wanted to do, and they didn't want to keep these people hanging. So and they, they also had to renew their options or something, yeah. like literally right now. They were running out of time, so they ultimately decided to cancel it. The, the current showrunner is saying that she hopes that maybe there's a second life for it on another network, but you know, they, this doesn't seem like one of those shows that knew it was being canceled, so they wound it down and ended the story. I'm sure this oh, ends no. on a cliffhanger, yep. and you know we'll yeah. never see more of it. Or if we do, it'll be a long time, because it's clearly know there's how no much second season in production. Those first seasons that get canceled after you've I'm invested in I'm kind of glad I'm only two episodes or three episodes. I think I'm three episodes <laughs> in, so I may just stop watching it because I'm enjoying it, but if it's just going to end and go nowhere, then what's the point? Yeah. I was kind of thinking the same thing, and that's one of the reasons that I, I only watched one more episode, and then I saw that, and I was like, hmm, okay. Uh, it is very different than the comic. I think there's some elements that are very, very close, but like the... At the end of the second episode, he's reunited with his mother, and that doesn't happen for like a long, long time. So it's they're telling a different story here. Yeah, I mean the um, article that I that I found tonight that that just came out said uh, they thought that the, the show would have the original way it was put together was it would have tackled toxic masculinity, but instead they decided to focus on gender identity. So okay. that was the change that they made. And I can kind of see that in the, in the two episodes I've seen. Yeah, well, in the second episode, I was like, wait a minute, why is not the last man? There's another man. But then I 
then you realize through watching that episode that it, it's actually a man who's transitioned to a woman, so that's why he looks There's like a man. There's actually more than one trans there? person yeah. in it, but they, they leave this guy behind. Right. Um, uh, there were no trans characters in the original story. So um, it, it's a different era. Um, and they didn't even cancel it because of cost, because it was only like eight and a half million dollars an episode, which that's is relatively only, inexpensive. That's a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, in today's world, that's on not that. Hulu. A season costs the, the other million thing dollars? too is I honestly I think Hulu looks at stuff now through the handmade Handmaid's Tale lens, where it's like if it's not going to be you know they'll they'll put money out there, but if it's not going to be a mega hit for them, which this was not from the from the get go, then. There's no reason to commit to it, and they're going to look for the next thing. It's just crazy because it, it was in development for like five years. It took like five years. To oh, get more than that. This thing was optioned when the comic series. Was well, no, it was originally made, yeah. going to be made into a movie. That right. fell apart. But I'm saying the TV series is in development for like five years. Yeah. yeah. And I saw a commercial today, La Brea, the number one new show on television. So I don't even think Todd knew this, but. Dave and, and Pam were on the island over the weekend, so we got together. And we were sitting in my living room. We put the TV on. Wait, the and... Lost Island? Or Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were on La Brea Island. They were on Long Island, and we went to La Brea Island. And we watched, like, I don't know, three minutes of whatever the next episode or this third episode was that happened to be on. And <clears throat> it's unwatchable. It's unwatchable. I mean, we were not even looking to watch anything. We just wanted something on in the background. Second episode, was... you said? Third, third, I think. Third. Oh, okay. Because I've seen, I think I've seen the first two. I have seen the first two. All right. It's so. not even good background <laughs> material. No. I will, I will watch Ghost if it comes across my television, but I haven't. My seen DVR it. recorded the next episode because I never told it to stop, so it's there if I choose to watch it. Well, it's on, yeah, it's on stuff. It's on Paramount Plus. Yeah. But anyway, all right. There you go. Why literally the last man? Because no one cares. Uh, what, Todd? What do you got? Uh. Disney announced a lot of delays on the films. Um, yes, they did. So some are just a couple of months. Um, I have the feeling that a lot of this is that these things tie back, t- tie in with each other. And Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness cannot come out after another film. Mm. So, I mean, that's the that's gone back from March uh, 2020 to May 2020. Yeah. And then... Um, Thor from May 6th to July 8th. Uh, Black Panther moved from July 8th to November 11th. Um, Ant-Man and Wasp, February 2013 to uh, 2023 to July 2023. Yeah. And the... You left one out, though. The Marvels. I know, I'm getting... I'm, oh, what's that? Okay. The Marvels, the Marvels also went from yes, November yep. 22 to February 23. That's right. Um, I wonder if they're hedging February their bets on box office. It's just, it's just early 23. And then, most very significantly, Indiana Jones, still untitled, moved from June 30th to July 29th. Um, uh, no, moved from July 29th, 2022 yeah. to June, June 30th, 2023. <laughs> so 11 months from a, a date that's been delayed twice already. But some of well, that has to be because of the six-month delay in filming. Some of that. It's also because Harrison Ford said, I'm not going to do another one of these unless it's over my dead body. So he's hoping... Well, I, I have a, yeah, he, he wants yeah. to be dead before it ever comes out. So yeah. he doesn't have no, to read I, the reviews. Yeah. The other thing, too, is they've got, like... I mean, you got to... I mean, these are moving from one slot to another. I can't imagine they didn't have an open slot at some point during that, that 11 months if they wanted to get tighter with that. No, that um, one's... The other ones make sort of... They're they're moving their pieces on the board. This one, who the hell knows why? I, I've also heard, and I, and I've been avoiding because I don't want to read articles. I don't want to read rumors, but they've almost been unavoidable that there. So many people are saying that this is a time travel story. Ugh. I hope to God that that's not true. I don't know. If, is that true? It's been reported in a lot of places. That just does not fit, does it? <laughs> What's that not. Humphrey Bogart travel time travel movie? Oh, there wasn't one because it just doesn't make <laughs> and sense. I guess it depends on the definition of time travel. If it's that the story jumps around in time, fine. If Harrison Ford's character Indiana Jones is going to travel through time, I've got a problem with that. Mm. 
Did you see those pictures of him? In, I guess it was in London, and then some people were dressed up as Indiana Jones, and he took a picture with them? No, I didn't see that. Oh, really? It was on, like, Instagram. Like, I guess fans were there while they were filming, and he took a picture with them all. I, hmm. It depends on the mood you catch the man in. Sometimes he's super friendly, I hear, and sometimes he's not. Yeah, who the hell knows? Anyway, so... That's interesting. But we still have Eternals like in a couple of weeks, right? Right. Yep. And I I fear I may be two Marvel movies behind pretty soon because I didn't see Shang Chung Chi and I'm not gonna wait for Shang Chi to see Eternals. I mean I I think I'll go see the Eternals. I think I'll I would still I try to. this. Well you won't be because oh yeah, the twelfth. November twelfth Shang Chi comes out on Yeah. I don't know if I'll get that. I just, I don't even see how I'm going to, I mean, we're going to be away that weekend, aren't we? Doesn't it come out the weekend of the 5th? No. Oh, it does. Ooh, maybe Eternals. we should go see it. It does. We should. Us and all the other people at Rhode Island Comic Con. Well, let's go some idea. crazy time. Oh, let's figure something out. I don't know. There's a lot to do. We'll be at Rhode Island Comic Con if you are there and vaccinated, come and say hi. Yeah. If you're not vaccinated... Stay away. I'm really curious to see what the setup is going to be because I've been seeing pictures from conventions all over the country showing up on the different Facebook groups that we're in. Some of the guests are behind plexiglass. Some of the guests are standing arm in arm with guests with no masks on. Some of them are taking photos uh, with plexiglass in between them. The ones without the plexiglass have a Trump 2024 flag next to them. I was, I mean, Giancarlo Esposito last weekend was taking pictures of people. There's, he's at a table. There's no plexiglass. He's like got his arms around people. Like, it was but funny. then I showed the pictures. I sent you pictures of, um, oh, the art, the woman that plays the armor in yeah. Mandalorian. She had no plexiglass, but then I saw other pictures of people that did. So yeah, that's interesting. I wonder I, if it's a show by show thing or, or a guest. By I don't guest know. Thing. It's not up to. I think it's up to the guests. Um, Adam Savage had a thing today. Not today. It was he was with a guy who dressed up as a Ghostbusters thing, and it's someone he knows. And it, it, they made a point because I guess they've been at a couple conventions together. This guy makes puppets or something, and he said it's interesting. It's like sort of the community that goes to conventions or in some sense of the same mind. You know, they all want to go have a good time. There's not like all of a sudden these outliers who were a bunch of assholes show up in theory so they're all wearing their masks they're being respectful of not you know going up to people and maybe that's the case that makes these you know not so bad i mean i'm hoping that's the case you know everyone wants to go to, to have the the convention experience so why ruin it by you know being a anti max masker and being an asshole. So right. I, don't I, know. I will be wearing my Why the Last Man cosplay, which is a gas mask and a cheap uh, <laughs> rain poncho. There you go. So, so All right. that's the story. Anyway, Barry, what do you got? So we texted about this, but I, I feel like it's worthy of mentioning on the show. It appears that the Wand Company communicator is coming back. Although there's absolutely no mention of the name the Wand Company in any of it, but on Star Trek Shop Star Trek dot or Shop dot Star Trek dot com, they have it listed as the original series Bluetooth communicator. I said phaser, didn't I? I meant communicator. Fifty um, fifth anniversary limited edition. It's one hundred and seventy nine ninety five. It's a pre order right now that that says it's available to ship November seventeenth, so it's not that far away. Um, it's definitely the exact same item as the Wand Company one because it's the same base and all. Same yeah, same everything. base. Everything. I think they yeah, same base. Even the same instruction manual. It's if a different they were, box. if they were smart, they worked out a deal, with, exclusive deal with them, and and just are supplying them. Oh yeah. yeah, well, and it's smart. Bring the communicator back, then bring the phaser back because the tricorder's coming, and everybody wants the all I three. I don't know. Of them. The, I bet they're not making. I think they actually are the people who actually bought more at Best Buy than me and Todd, and just <laughs> loaded up on them, and they and decided the boxes. to sell them, <laughs> or. They're so there was a there was three pallets somewhere that turned up and that's exactly and, right and they were they were the smart ones to buy. Well, look, the, we all know that tooling is super expensive. So if they have the tooling and they're actually already more, man, like in the manufacturing phase of the tricorder, it might not be that hard to throw. It's this more thing about back licensing production. than tooling, but that's I think they, they well no. They, but once the no, license, but, once the tooling exists, all you okay. got to do is sign a licensing agreement. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Who is Star Trek? I think they bought these. What Star Trek dot com is Paramount. Yeah, Fire that's what I'm con. saying. So maybe they don't have a licensing issue. Maybe everyone else has a licensing issue. Maybe. 
But, but clearly, I'm, the Wan Company has a Star Trek made. license because they're making tricorders, so they have a Star yeah. Trek license. A Star Trek license. I'm saying for this particular thing. So, remember how they got around it for for the phaser, and then they got around this being a Bluetooth headset. That well, light- but that was at a time when other people had the license to do Star Trek props. Nobody's got the license for Star Trek props right now. Mm. There's no Star Trek props on the market. Doesn't QMX had one. Doesn't mean the market. license isn't tied up somewhere. Well, I, I mean, look, if just, Star Trek they're... wants to make communicators, they can make them. That's why I'm saying. I'm saying if anybody could, I'm, that's my point, Barry. I'm saying if anybody could push that order through, they could do it. It's so. expensive to repackage packaged goods. These are in new boxes. I don't believe that these were sitting around on a pallet somewhere. These you don't are think brand new. Think, Plus, you don't think it's just a new outer batteries. sleeve? They would, have had to, they would have had to take the batteries out. I, I'm telling you, these are these are new, man, newly manufactured. Huh. Those batteries, some what of those batteries were, were, were faulty by now. They were DOA to begin, some of them. Yeah, yeah. so, so I, I, I believe that these are newly manufactured. But in any case, for... I mean, look, we got super lucky. We got them at $50 a piece on clearance. So $179.95 is a bargain for this thing, I think. At full retail, it's a bargain. Well, they. Were, I don't know, what, Dave. Were they in touch with you? Because they contacted me about buying my pallet. Yeah. <laughs> I, <know>. <laughs> <laughs> I say we'll good. See. I say everybody that missed out now finally gets an opportunity. Because they've been selling on the secondary market for $500. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Anything? Okay, Todd, you got anything else? I got one last thing. Okay. The, there's a new Batman animated series in development called Batman Cape Crusader that looks really, really cool. It's old school, like 1930s Batman. Uh, Bruce Timm, J.J. Abrams, Matt Reeves. Um, really excited about this. There was a short for the Batman 80th anniversary that they collaborated on, and this is in that style. So um, if you if you're interested in batman here's it's it was the the, you can find it on youtube and everywhere it's batman's strange days um very very cool um and this it's very dark spooky batman so um we haven't really had this in a uh, animated or even a live action thing it's a it's the again batman early days when he encountered a lot more monsters than supervillains and and um yeah should be interesting i got one other dave Okay. Uh, they announced today, and I'm very excited about this. Maybe nobody else will be, but uh, History of the World Part Two yeah, so is that. going to be a sequel to the 1981 movie, but it's going to be a variety series on Hulu. And Mel Brooks is writing and executive producing. It's it a looks series? like the Piss Boy. It, I didn't. It's know a that. variety series. Yes, it's going to be. a I didn't series. read that sentence in there. That's interesting. Eight episodes. Um, and the writing writing room starts up in October, and production begins in the spring. Hmm. So, interesting. I'm excited right, I about that. Two quickies. Pennyworth moves to HBO Max. Yep. That's not for season three. That's not. Um, that's not surprising. The, um, the good thing with that is people will actually see that can see the first yeah. two seasons, and right. and they're really they're really good. It's it's good stuff. It's it's yeah. I I, I love the show. So. And. Mel Gibson is going to be in the Continental, the John Wick that. series, which is like, people still hire this guy? He's probably not as expensive as he used to be. I just, I guess it's, I don't know, whatever, but. In this day and age, is it better to have a, a name that's got controversy than a no name? Yeah, but I guess I know. you're just, a anti-Semitic asshole is okay, but if we start getting Kevin Spacey and Harvey Weinstein back then it's a little crossing the line I would not disagree there are a bunch of trailers out that we have not talked about that we're not going to talk about now but we probably should next week yeah okay yeah. let's make a list I have no yeah. idea what those are but let's I make have a list, list. I, I have a list of some of it anyway so you know who if someone has a list and they check it twice and they want to get gifts you go to Fanboy Collectibles that was a little roundabout but that was kind of Santa Claus to show you. Check, Very it's, good. it's the season. We said last week. Yep. And with the supply chain issues, shop early, everybody. That's what they're saying. Yep. Not that, well, who knows? Maybe toys are affected, but they got everything you need. Uh, there's a cool Nightcrawler statue that's now in stock. There's a Kotobukiya Batman, The Last Night on Earth. It uh, looks like a futuristic Batman statue that looks pretty cool. 
there's hot toys and there's sideshows and there's pops and oh i don't know what else there's an excellent the uh, new... batman returns catwoman that's now in stock oh yes there's yep. a batman uh catwoman <laughs> to be there. In my house hot toys loki and sylvie figures up for pre-order oh i didn't see those on there oh yeah they're up there i must have missed those that those are up for pre-order check and them in out. stock they... hot toys mandalorian death watch figure in stock buy it now before i do hmm. there you go so check all that stuff out at their website www that's a world wide web that's what that stands for if anyone wants to know I think doesn't Jeez. it yeah, that's what it is fanboycollectibles.com or check them out their store in Newtown Connecticut tell them Regan Joe sent you what is this internet you speak of Dave yeah, that's know. right <laughs> uh, if, if you're on the phone have you hang up and then go online Get the yellow like, book out. Look yeah, up like fanboy collectibles. So yeah, I know you need to hang up before you turn on the modem. Yep. Um, you know that there's an entire generation of people that don't have any context of the phone books being thrown on their driveway like every I year. I was getting them up until like right before the I, pandemic. A little I actually local was, one. Yeah, I, I said to my class, we were talking about privacy. And I said, they used to, I said, years ago, I, you know, first I said, what would you think if somebody like, collected everybody's name and phone number and put it on a book and home and address in a home address and put it in a book and just gave it away to people and they were like no that's wrong that's, that's totally wrong that shouldn't happen and it's like uh yeah that did happen and it's like, five like, years this is the phone book where doc brown was yeah so that Crazy. was the yeah. thing what were we talking about anyway yeah so <laughs> go check them out uh, they're listed. They're in. The, they're in the, in the overnet. They're in the Googles. They're in the Googles or the Ask Jeeves. I just had seen the thing on BuzzFeed of <laughs> web crawl. If you did any of these things, you're officially old. It's like if you used any search engine other than Google. If you've ever re- rewinded a cassette tape with a pencil. If you uh, <laughs> had to hang up the, the phone to get on the internet. If you blah blah blah. There's a bunch of them. I saw one that was a picture of the the yellow spindle that goes in the middle of a forty five, and they're like, "If you know, if you what, know this what this is, is you're yeah. old." That's that <laughs> yeah. means you're really old. Yeah. Um. So, James Bond. Um. What number of movie is this? Like 20, 25. 25. Uh, 25 or twenty five. Twenty five or twenty seven, if you yeah. count the unofficials. What are you counting? Like the other Casino Royale. The other never Casino never Royale again. and Never Say Never. Ugh, Never Say Never is awful. Was yes, awful. but they're technically yeah. James Bond movies. They are James Bond movies. Well, I guess so. But they're not in canon. Um, right. Yeah, because there's a single plot thread that runs through the other 25 official well, that's movies. The interesting yeah, thing. well, the other thing is both of those that. films are, are pretty much remakes. I mean, or they're, yeah. they're, 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 they've either been remade or they're remake themselves. I mean... Um, never well, say never. Casino Royale has nothing to do with uh, certainly this newer Casino Royale. That was actually a fun kind of movie. I thought they were. Wait, anyway. wait the, the new one was a fun kind of movie. No, the old one, the sixty-seven. Okay, okay. One. Yes, yeah. No, it was a pair. It was a this semi parody. Was, wait, sitting on a chair and having someone hit you Smash in the balls with the nuts <laughs> with a giant yeah. whatever yeah. isn't fun. Yeah. you don't know how to have fun. I, I would say I that, that was part. in the in. One form I mean, in in a form that was in the actual book in Casino Royale, and in the book I believe it was it was a carpet beater they were hitting with um, through the same chair arrangement, and it was every bit as excruciating as it was in this in the movie, and I was stunned that they went there. Yeah, um, yeah. so anyway, but that's so, a fifteen year old movie, and we're not not so much really, two thousand six. That. That's crazy that it's that long ago. Yeah. But so there will be spoilers, by the way, and I mentioned before. So um, this is Daniel Craig's final Bond. They actually brought him back for this one. They wanted Spectre to be his last one. They brought him back. Um, I mean, I I thought I enjoyed it. Did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. Um, it it's. You know, it was it was. Uh, he's got five films; they're very uneven. Um, it's it's kind of, you know. I guess every other one is good. Um, so 
Casino Royale, good. Quantum Silence, not really not good. Not good. Skyfall, good. I thought Spectre was pretty Spectre good. Spectre was okay, but not not, not, not great. Quantum Sol- Solace. And, and this was better, but not fantastic. I mean, I, I, think it's, I think it's Casino Royale, Skyfall, and then this are the three best of them. I'd say I'd agree with that. Yeah. Of, but, of his five movies, I've only seen Casino Royale. And again, it's not that I don't like James Bond, and it's not that I... Don't want to watch them, and I actually bought Quantum of Solace, Skyfall, and Spectre you watch, on Blu-ray. You watched forty seasons of Survivor. That's right. Well, you, but and, I mean, and you're rewatching this is, But this is where I was headed. <laughs> it's just Bond's just not a priority for me. I don't. Yeah. I like it when I watch it, but I don't feel like, oh my god, I have to watch it. And that's kind of like why I know it's there, and I'll get to it when I get to it. I should have watched them when I had COVID. <laughs> the beginning of the year would have been the perfect time to well, watch. Well, that's them, what's funny when we. We've done a Bond, and I don't know what number it is. And it was like seven years ago, and I, yeah. I watched like right, six yeah. Bond movies yeah. for we, that podcast. Way back then, I had I st- I've talked about my ear issue. I was take getting hyperbaric treatments way back to what they thought was going to solve my ear issue of I have this hearing loss and blah blah blah. And it was every day for two hours. It was like you're in this Michael Jackson tank. And they put you in d- d- pressurized, blah blah blah. But to kill, <laughs> it was just to be clear, to... Michael Jackson wasn't in the tank with you. No, he wasn't in the tank. But <laughs> okay, I know this is sounding that, very that would be horrible. Oh, <laughs> damn! Horrible. Anyway, I had to have these treatments where, where you just basically sat there, and there was a TV. So I, I'm like, I'm going to watch every James Bond movie while I'm here, and then I suggested that we watch yeah. James Bond. I think did we ever we. We did the first round, and we never went back to the we next never finished round. It, no. So we did Connery and Roger Moore. And but I in preparation think... for all that, I bought all the freaking movies. Of so I have them some all. A reason to buy everything. Yeah. That's good, um, though. That's, it's, we, we need those. You should have those. What was the point of all that? What was the point of that long story? No, I was just saying that you, you were talking about which, which of the Daniel Craig movies you thought were the better ones, and I was just... Kind of going down a rabbit hole, saying I had yeah. only seen one. So, so we saw a bunch of them. So, refer back to that episode. But I do. I mean, then it's like, who's your James, who's your James Bond? It was always for me. It was Roger Moore. Then it was Sean Connery. Uh, then I think I went back to Roger Moore. Had a certain. He did the sort of funny James Bond better than certainly Pierce Brosnan did. But I feel like. I feel like um, Daniel Craig was the first serious James Bond without being sort of a womanizer and punching women and stuff, the way Sean Connery was. Uh, yeah. Or not yeah. that it's his fault. The character was... Yeah. The man's got, the man's got his issues, okay? It's, it's ba- basically, the through line is he trusts a woman if she's his boss or she, he's, she's within 10 feet of him. Uh, but other than that, he doesn't. You're um, saying Daniel, Daniel Craig's Craig, bond because the yeah. second you get the second she's out of sight, any woman is out of sight. He doesn't trust her anymore. Yeah, um, that's true. It's he's got issues. He's definitely got issues. But so. you know, it's funny. And I, I again, I was just repeating this, but I've seen every James Bond movie in the theaters. We used to go see double features when I was like five years old. You watch those Sean Connery, especially the early ones. They're a little like, oh my god, this this stuff that go, this, that would never happen. Like, oh and and. Try he, reading the books. I mean, he rapes ooh. women basically. Oh, in in, in in the book, there's discussion of that it, it, yeah. in in a very creepy way. So, it's it, the '60s were a very different time. Yeah, um, exactly. But I like the Daniel Craig. I I think in terms of you know the error, it's not all him. It's the writing, it's the producing, but it's his character. I I find that is the modern version of you know it's got all the fun stuff. But more serious tone. There's the gadgets without them being over over the top. So I've really enjoyed the Daniel Craig era of James Bond. If if you compare it with what came before it, all all these these films are very good. I mean, even even the bad ones are good. The the Pierce Brosnan era was just. I mean, there was, was really tough. one watchable film in there. Goldeneye. It's, the '90s and, were just and, you know, and then it was and, just like they had no idea what they were doing and they just flailed around. Um, yeah. and, and, uh, they almost killed the franchise. There's, there's no question. Um, and this was, this was a good redirection. It, it changed things back to, 
I think the kind of elemental nature of, of Bond, he, he was much less polished than than Sean Connery's Bond. And but I think it's also for the modern era. You know, he was uh, M referred to him in the first in the first film as a blunt instrument. And he was a blunt instrument. I yeah. mean, that that is exactly it. I mean, if you you look at the the first scene in in Casino Royale where he's chasing the guy, the parkour guy, mm-hmm. and and the guy vaults through a window and he runs through the wall. It's like you you knew who you were dealing with right then and there. And and um, and the thing that they showed you, I think, about Daniel Craig's Bond. I mean, you know, all the other ones were this you know sophisticated guy who could do anything and get the women and. And you know, suave and the spy and all this. James Bond's a broken dude. I mean, this really, you know. Oh, he he's he's a hard edged killer. Okay, he's yeah, a guy that they I mean, put in his it, job because he could he could they, kill they, people pretty much yeah. without remorse. Exactly. They recruit. They showed you even in in um, Casino Royale. They recruit people who were you know definitely have or messed up and can do the kind of shit that it, they have it, to do. It's, yeah. Yep. And you see that. I mean, in this, I think they push that in this series more. I mean, he retired or quit almost every movie. I mean, it's just because, you know, it's just too much for him. And, and you know, he leaves bodies in his wake. It was almost a little too much. I would have, and I think we've probably done, I would have loved to see seen at least two movies where Bond is Bond. He's not leaving. There's no one dead that he's all remorseful about. It's just like, do go yeah. on some missions. And we that's, never that's quite right. got and that. I will say that's one of the things that my my probably biggest criticisms of this film, in some ways, you could argue that they were like making an homage to all Bond films, but there's a lot of cliches in this film. And, you know, the the island base the disfigured bad guy with a vague I think they did yeah very with, with a vague accent and a vague plan uh, plot to to ruin the world the solution of which makes no you know their solution for it made no sense whatsoever because they basically blew up a chemical plant that's on an island in the middle of the water so everything <laughs> with in that, chemicals that cannot be eradicated they not be eradicated they <laughs> just basically like... disperse them off the coast of japan okay so so you're saying the plot doesn't make sense well no but i mean see well, it's like none it's, of the it's, james bond plots i know that's like, i guess i guess theoretically these missiles could have vaporized it, everything it inside there, like but... um like like the rock when they had certain temperature things yeah. could eradicate yeah. the, no, I mean, uh, those if they the managed to stuff. you know if they managed to like trigger a volcanic reaction or something i could say yeah possibly that lab's going to be sealed they, for yeah. all time i wish they said that i'm like oh these explosives will burn at 2000 degrees that, that's, and it can and that's what i'm so saying so if it it's was, on it was, you you'd have to burn your hand off right and and that's exactly I'll something just, something that. like that that made it it just just blowing the facility up when like i said it revolved around a gigantic pool of of you know toxic chemical and yet it was situated in the water was was kind of odd the remy malik i mean he, he did a fine job but he was a cartoon yeah, i mean it was, it was just it, it was not i i almost felt like that character wasn't necessary so i mean yeah. anyway so blofeld from the last movie if you have seen blofeld the classic bond villain uh is actually his step brother or not even step brother sort of a guy took Bond in who was an orphan when he was a kid and he had a son and the son is Blofeld. So that was never in the other versions of Blofeld. Is so that Blofeld, the big spoiler? No, no, no. No, that was pre- oh, That was spoiled in the last movie. Oh, okay. Right. Got it. So Blofeld is really his sort of adoptive brother, if you will. Um, and he felt, this is back from, um, what's the movie? Before Spectre, he was the head of Spectre. He was pulling the strings for throughout the whole series, but he resented Bond because Blofeld's father took a liking to Bond and took him in and and favored him. So he, I mean, pretty basic. And that emotions. was that was one of one of the reasons why that was just one of the, one of the lesser movies. I mean, it just and, and it was. I think that in Quantum of Silence was just 
was solace. Solace. Silence. It, it's, it's just it's, in my head, it's silence. But solace <laughs> was just, yeah, yeah. That was done during the writer's strike, and they didn't do any rewrites. But anyway. they really did. It, yeah. Um, but this one, you know, again, what you know, he has a girl. You get go. Does he have the girl? He goes back to the girl. He um, so we goes were, on at some the end of Spectre, we were chases. left with the opening for a happily ever after. Okay, you know, which does they, not happen. They drove off. No, but I'm saying they drove off together, yeah. and Telly Savalas didn't shoot her, and it was like, okay, maybe this could work out. He's quitting Bond. He's going to move on, do other things. We're going to get a new Bond, and then they brought him back, and it was kind of like. Yeah, just really prolonging that final act. They had to do something with that. Um, there were a few, I was like, in this, there were a few kind of nods to Bond and nods to the franchise itself, which I thought oh, yeah. were kind of good. I love the portraits of the three M's yeah. um, in the in the hallway. Uh, so the in three, the hallway of MI6. They had at MI6, the, the, the three old. actors who had played M previously, there were portraits of them in the hallway as if they were previous you know, M's. And then um, also the the awesome in the tunnel, the the turn and shoot, mimicking the the gun barrel opening. Mm-hmm. Oh, you yeah, catch, yeah, 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 it was brilliant. So so anyways, he he's going through clearing out all these guys, and he drops a rifle, and he's only got a pistol, and he turns a corner, and he's looking straight down a circular hallway with like grooved edges, and it's just like the gun barrel opening from every Bond montage. And he just does the same position and shoots and then moves on. You never see who he shoots or anything like that. It was totally a... Yeah, that was kind of cool. It was, it but was, they I bring that was back clever. the classic DB5 that has been destroyed I don't know how many times. <laughs> yes. And yeah. it's in perfect shape and working. And there is a great scene with it where he takes on a, a bunch of people. And it's a great car chase with that car. And it does all its things. And it gets destroyed yet again. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to actually uh, drop a picture. And I don't know if you read anything about this, Todd. Um, they they had um, they had made this many. Uh, look at the picture. This is how many they made of the car for this movie. Yeah, I'm wow. showing them a picture with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine DB5s. Uh, were in and the most movie. of them are pretty beat up. Yeah. So there's two real ones, and they made, I think, seven or eight others. And some were the gadget ones, some were the, ra- the chase ones. So that's pretty freaking awesome if these ever go off for auction they're going to go for a ridiculous amount of money yeah yeah um so, so just and then just he switches to and then he switches to another model he switches yeah. to the vantage right um wait wait barry what are you gonna say i was just gonna jump in for a second i just looked it up while you guys were talking episode 14 called What's shaken it? not stirred from 2013 wow. was the episode where we talked about bond yeah and it also features a brand new segment called Explain It To Me Like I'm Tom, which I think oh, we did once. We, we did once, yeah. <laughs> yep. Wow. Um, but yeah, it was from 2013, that, that show. Yeah. So it was interestingly enough, so he gets out of this thing. He was with the girl, right? And yeah. I, I don't want to go through the whole movie, but so he, he thought he was going to live with this girl. Then he doesn't trust her. So they break up and he goes to Jamaica and retires. Mm-hmm. So basically, I mean, they set her up. They 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 intentionally tried to trick Bond into thinking you couldn't trust this woman. And but he grabbed onto it hook, line, and sinker because of you know, you you would kind of think he learned something from Vesper Lund, but didn't really. And again, I think in, in the you know Well they, he was thinking because she was controlled by other people, Vesper. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Green. It's like, but and he's thinking that happened too, and right, and 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 he may never trust anyone again because of that. Well, we, we know he won't. But how um, do you ever trust anyone when you're James Bond anyway? I mean, and that is just it. And it's like it's it's just to be that person. You've got to be so broken in so many different ways that you know there is no happily ever after. Um, no. It just it doesn't happen, um, and. 
you know, it, it's uh, they threw a lot in this movie. They they, they did, did throw a lot in this movie. I, so I, I will say, I think I think it could have been twenty minutes at least shorter. Um, it, it's it, it's a haul getting through this thing. Um, it's it's yeah, it's it's tricky. I mean. There's cool. I'm just if you want to look at the surface stuff, there's definitely cool car stuff. There's cool gun stuff. There's the casino thing. Anna Diarmis, if you don't know her, okay, she so that ten she's minutes great. That ten minutes that, that's classic is indispensable and some of the best stuff that was in this film. Yeah. Okay. And Barry, you saw Knives Out, right? Yes. Okay. So the nurse character from Knives Out and the detective character from Knives Out. Two totally different characters in this film, okay, but just as great together and absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, she was just she was amazing. She was great. And, they and could make a series of her. I, 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 yeah, it was it was absolutely terrific. Um, so she's like this new CIA agent in okay. training, and but she totally kicks ass, and it was great. I yeah, know we're kind of old. She basically closer. implies that she's had three. Don't worry, because she's had three weeks of training, and. Um, and she's had a lot more than three weeks of training and, and, um, and, and, uh, just, it was amazing. And Ben and, Affleck and, dumped her to go back to freaking Jennifer Lopez. What's up? <laughs> Figure that out. It's just, it's like, it's, but, um, the choreography of that was just brilliant. You know, the two of them are, are going back and forth. You know, they're taking out, neither of them are armed. So they've got to take out people and grab guns from them, and then they would fire them until they're empty and toss guns back and forth. And you know, it's just it's that is the the best fight sequence in the whole thing, and it's great. Um, but it's also vintage, old school feeling Bond kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, but with the woman not being the you know the victim or the hostage or whatever, she you know she's an active participant and she's probably doing a little better than he is at, at some points. Yeah, does she still... become the love interest, or is she just no, no? And that's the great thing about this. That's it's what like... I was going to say. That that actually is probably better because in, in a vintage yeah, Bond movie, he it, would have ended up in bed with her at the it's, end. It's funny. Oh, there's no question. There's no he question. would have definitely slept with her. But even at one point, she brings him a tuxedo to go into the yep. into the casino, and he's like, "Can you turn around so I can get dressed?" Yeah. Like you know, old Bond would have been like. Yeah. I'm going to have sex with you, and then I'll put it on, and yeah. then we'll go. <laughs> right. have sex with you whether you want me to or not. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, but it, it's again that that stuff was absolutely fantastic, and um, it was great seeing Felix Leiter again. Boy, Felix Leiter is just is is. Uh, um, let's just say, <laughs> how do we put this? A lot of bad shit happens to Felix Leiter. <laughs> yeah, well, let's. I think we'll get into all the spoilers all in one time. But the yep. other thing is, during all this, so Bond's retired. So he's with the woman. He then he doesn't trust her. Then he goes off and retires. He goes to Jamaica for five and then years. Five years later. Okay. Five years it's later, like, he's really, sucked back in. We can't go to six years. We can't go to seven and a half it should, years. It should it have been had three to be years. Five years. It's like. Okay. Yeah. But they've so he's retired and they've reassigned his number to another person All who's a woman. All the people that vanished in the previous Bond film have come back. No, I'm no, sorry, I'm confused. So so there's a 007 who's this uh, African American woman, and there was some who, who jokes. We last saw as uh, uh, Monica Rambo, uh, not Monica Rambo, uh, Maria Rambo, and, and Captain. Oh, is that Bond. who that is? That yeah. Oh, Captain is that Monica. who that was? Yeah. Okay. Wait a second. In Captain Marvel? Yes. She looks so much taller in this movie. Um, anyway. So, anyway, there's some jokes back and forth about that. And then, okay, spoilers. Felix wait, Leiter wait, wait, dies. Daryl, 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 if you're listening, here's a spoiler yeah. coming. Yeah. Felix Leiter gets killed. You know, who's... What's his face? What's his name? In Jeffrey real life? Wright. He's in Jeffrey everything. Jeffrey Wright, who's been Felix through this whole series. Yep. Then he gets the he and the woman get kidnapped or something. He realizes, you know, she wasn't bad. It was they were being set up. Uh, they're tricked into killing Blofeld. He's dead. 
Then Bond goes and finds her, and she has a daughter that's not his. Okay, did you see that coming? Because I I will say... I didn't see that coming. Oh, my God. Like, seven seconds before, I said, and then the five-year-old kid shows up, and then the kid comes down the stairs. I knew when they went back to her family home, okay, it was like, there was a reason for this. And it was like, I said, and then the five-year-old kid shows up, and then the kid comes around the corner. And so she's the, like, is it a not... five-year-old kid? And is it not? And it's not his kid. Well, oh, it, it's it, a five-year-old kid with blue eyes while they're taking a f- shot of him where his eyes are clearly it, very it's blue. It's not even just blue eyes. I mean, it's like they like cast 7,000 kids until they found the kid with his totally his eyes. And it, it's... Uh, but yeah. they claim in the movie that it's not. No, his no, kid. the girl, the woman, Madeline no, Swan. There's a brief claim, but it's it's uh, claims it's not. So anyway, he and the girl Madeline get kidnapped, and the little girl, um, this piece of shit uh, Toyota Land Cruiser, fights off brand new Land Rover Defenders, which was never would never happen. <laughs> and and <laughs> like. Goes door to door with those things with with huge plumes of sparks coming out and then has no damage. These, a this... 1993 Land Cruiser goes up against 2025 <laughs> at the time, I guess, Land Rover Defenders and just beats them. I, it doesn't it, it make was, any sense. It was incredible that that what that that vehicle did, and then was not da- you know it was like seriously it was he was like hitting them in the doors. They were doing the Indiana Jones thing, like bumping door to door, and then it's like, okay, now there's no damage on that side of the car. What's uh, crazy is, so Aston Martin obviously has sponsorship in this movie in a big way, because there is the new 007 drives a new one. There's the classic ones. There's another one that we'll get into in a second. Land Rover has something, because there's Land Rovers all over the place. How do they allow... This other car to sort of like beat at all, all the. Uh, I mean, he should have been driving like a different Land Rover, or an, you know, I don't. It just didn't make any sense. And not Land Rover. Yeah, it, Ranch, I think Range it was Rover. an appropriate vehicle for her to have at that house. So, but commercial, you know, from a product placement, it didn't make any sense. Yeah, you you honestly think that that Land Rover paid for product placement? There's a. I I I to have those surprised. vehicles the, rolled over like that. Maybe I don't not. think so. But Land Rovers have been in all those movies. They, they have, but I'm saying they were all bad guy vehicles, and none of them ended up well. Did, none of them did well. Well, Land Rover was a sponsor of one, like, the one when he gets shot in the arm. Right, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Anyway. But what Todd mentioned before, so after his DB5, the silver one, gets wrecked, he comes out with this 1980s, 70s, black, it's, it was called a V8. I don't know if it's a Vantage, but this classic. Vantage. Interestingly enough, in one of the Timmy, Timothy Dalton movies, he drives the exact same car with the exact same license plate, which puts a through line of it, are all these bonds, all the, there's other stuff too, there, there, all the same person they're not, and they're though, looking at different moments. They're, they're not because he keeps meeting Felix Leiter for the first time. And he keeps meeting Blofeld for the first time. But what I'm saying so, is, are they look? Are no, they? No, those are just Easter eggs. I know, but you could, you could yeah, say. Yeah, no, I know that. But I'm saying, are you yes, seeing you you can, him in different times? Yeah, times I mean, cl- clearly, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, it was meant to be the same Bond. Okay, they did. They planted all this stuff in that movie to make it think like this is a continuation of the same character. I don't think any of the other characters were meant to be linear progressions of the same character. Because remember that Craig, Craig's first film, he was just it's his made... his beginning. But is know, that the beginning, in theory, before Dr. No? It's weird. Okay, so... It at, doesn't when, work from... When, I mean, just from the, the eras that each one of the... I mean, not, it would be saying. absurd oh, the other, the to other try Easter to... The in this was the guys, the scientists wearing the Dr. No hats, the Dr. No suits. I thought that was great. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, they were the environmental suits. Yeah. So what happened at when when Sean Connery was done? He just turned into Roger Moore. When Roger Moore was done, he turned into Timothy Dalton. When Timothy Dalton was done, he turned into Pierce Brosnan. I think okay. it's really hard to try 
to to make any claim that this is a one continuing story. I oh, think no, it's a it's reboot not. every it's, time they I, recast it. I think you could argue Timothy Dalton and and uh, Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan were linked. I think I think um, they try. There were there's connecting tissue between Roger Moore and and. Uh, Sean Connor, uh, actually, no, Roger Moore and Lazenby, because at one point she goes to he goes to Tracy's yes, he grave. goes to get um, Blofeld and kills Blofeld. Yeah, chops yep. him in the smokestack thing. So doesn't, yeah, but then wasn't Timothy Dalton reintroduced to Blofeld? Yeah, it's I don't a, remember. this Those is I a different remember. Felix Leiter because because he, he met him at the beginning of this. Yeah, again, it's you. you, you it's all over the place, but every one of those guys, just the next movie was a different guy. Now, spoiler: at the end of this, James Bond dies. Giant like, spoiler! Like no really? way! Wow! No like, way! No way no that he way. comes back. He knows he, this girl's her daughter. He's standing on top of a missile silo that has incoming missiles at it, aimed at it. He, and he's, he's standing there, he's, and he it blows up. He blows up. Okay, and he has a look on his face, which is so clearly relief that he's out of this franchise. <laughs> that Daniel Craig is just looking. Thank freaking God, it's done. Um, yeah. But that's, I, so that's the real... Why would the studio the, do that when they know they're going to bring this series back at some point? It's 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 time for a reboot. They well, got 15 it, it, years out of every this Every reboot they they've done... They got 15 years out of this run. They've never... They've never killed a Bond. Nope. There was a Bond book where it seemed... It was ambiguous whether he lived or died. And Ian Fleming was going to quit writing the series and then came back. And... That was when Rosa Klepp um, got him with the, the shoe knife thing, mm. and he was dying at the end of that, um, and clearly identifies dying. And then they brought Felix him back. is dead. He's dead at the end. He's got a daughter. All I mean, it's all crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I made specifically sure every time I saw James Bond in theaters, even back to when I was a little kid, it always was, would say. James Bond will return in Goldfinger. It does not. James Bond will return in Live and Let Die. It did say James Bond will return. At the last title card was James oh, it Bond did. will return. It did. I made sure that, and I took a picture of it. It's not on my phone though. Mark has it, so it did say that. So, is this going to be a com- obviously one way or another? It's got to be a complete reboot. But they've never killed the character before. So wh- wh- well, where they have but go they've from- also restarted it with different actors so many times. I know. They have. I know. They have. It's just, it's. I mean, I, I, I guess I'm a Mark, who's the biggest Bond fan, was okay with it. He's like, you know, it, it wrapped yeah, it up, and, and, again, and we're going to start exactly. over again. And, and that's, I, I'm, you know, we got a very narrow window glimpse at the the early days of his career in Casino Royale. We could. We could have him. We could see Bond being recruited from the SAS and going through training and being put out on his first mission and screwing up badly. And well, then, that was his first mission, though. No, but no, no. That was his. That was his. That was actually his second. Well, again, but it was also kind of in a snapshot in the opening sequence thing. I'm saying we could really see Bond year one. Um, and, so I have a question like for this, you. Yeah, go ahead. That's why. Yeah. So, was he? Did he just complete doing something heroic that saved a million people's lives, or did, was there? A, a, did he die a hero, or if you was don't it think a yeah. much about it? Yeah, he died a hero. Yeah. So, so, so there's this nanite, freaking, whatever, um, poison that is engineered like you can engineer it to kill only one person if you have if you if you like. Um, uh, computerize it to be someone's DNA. So, like, that's why they made this thing. And you saw it will kill one people, one person or certain people. This madman guy engineered it to kill everyone 
like but him and a bunch of people. And he also, when he had Madeline Swan, he was threatening her and her daughter because if if who he then inexplicably your DNA, just let run away, huh? Uh, who he then inexplicably just let run away. That's all another story. Yeah. But he he threatened it like if if it was you or anyone with your similar DNA would kill you. So anyway, okay. Bond gets this shit all over him, and there's no way to get it off. And the only way. He, so he can never see his daughter. So he's like, I'd rather die than see his daughter. So right. he didn't no, necessarily he, save the he world. It was also pretty clear that he had no way out of there, too. Oh, he couldn't get out anyway. Yeah, but. He, he, no getting out. And even if, you know, and that was the thing. Even if, like, you know, uh, you know, they fly in with little Nelly or something and grab him with a hook, he's not going to, you know, it, it's like he's, yeah, no. Um, he was also. So, I mean, it was pretty, definitely it was pretty shot up at that point, and you know, who, who knows? Um, I don't think there was coming back from that. But that's the so, thing. What do they do? What do they do next? I have no he's idea. He's gotten out of worse situations than that. Yeah, but it was final because he'd never see this kid. And stuff. I'm, right. part of me wonders. So this kid's name is Matilda or something. Matilda. Yeah. Um. So she grows up. Her nickname is James, and she becomes the next James yeah, Bond. Yeah, I kind of thought about that. It's like, could could they? Would it be let in the future? Though? Could they let this thing rest for ten years, and then have his daughter be? Yeah, no. it could be um, interesting. That's you know, an interesting they, way. No one wants the name Matilde, so you want to be called James. Hollywood doesn't let anything rest for ten years intentionally. No, it won't be ten years. <laughs> yeah, they have to flash forward to the future. Right. Yeah. No, it's it's going to be... Which it sounds like they're already in, right? Because this was five years later. Well, that's... Although it, it's it, always it, ambiguous what time period these movies take place, It's very right? ambiguous. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know where they go. I really have no idea. I mean, I feel like it'd be almost a cheat if it's like, okay, here we go, you know. Um, James McAvoy is now James Bond and we're starting all over again with all the... You know, it's just... Well, the other thing, too... Is there? There are th- this movie, this this series escaped the formula a little bit and then got sucked back into it. Okay, so they can take James Bond. You know, this originally was like a lot of people were like, "This is Jason Bourne Bond," um, and then they made it more traditionally Bond like. I, I, you know, they could come back with a different direction, a much more modern direction, where it's actually more spycraft and less, you know, island bases with really cartoon villains, you know, and and but do that, something a little bit different with Bond. it. Something, I mean, I don't no, know. but no, it's it's not Bond. But the thing is, well, Casino Royale was totally not, not that. Right. No, it's not. And the thing that I really liked about Casino Royale is. It's it's fairly faithful to the book. It's but but I think my my favorite Bond movies have been, you know, kind of tighter. So like I I love From Russia with Love. Okay, you know it, it's it's I think that's a great Bond movie. I think like actual espionage stories with this guy as a you know as a spy work. Um, I don't know if that sells well. If they're let's say we go. Go back to pre-pandemic box office. That doesn't sell box office. Sometimes. Somewhere yeah, along the way, saying. he went it's, from being a super spy to being a superhero. For and the most part. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. It's just like, but it, this it, was a more realistic version of that. The, the could, Craig like era. This, could Royale it work was, as a series, as a limited series on a streaming service instead of a movie? They're not going to. I don't think. No, they're, they're going to do that. That's that's what I Jack mean, Ryan's for. Um, and that's mediocre at best. That's what I'm saying. And and. I think, I don't know. I think they've got but some they, of the stories you're describing, like bit. the it recruitment, be... the first year. That stuff potentially could work. Yeah, I think so too. They've never story. done it. I think everyone sort of, especially I know. At least I listened to the the James Bonding podcast. These two guys, Matt and Matt, they're always look. And I've been listening to them since they've been talking about all these movies. They like, I think, myself, maybe you too, Todd. 
let's just see missions. It doesn't always have to be I'm quitting. That's what I'm saying I mean, is it I'm on an island. I'm drinking too much. The, the other it's thing too is, much of that. You know what we've never seen in a James Bond film is a sympathetic villain. We have never seen a villain who is doing the right thing in the wrong way. You know, this guy could have been killing everyone involved in, with Spectre, okay, and crossed the line and and created collateral damage, you know, that took innocent civilians, and that's why Bond had to go after him. Okay, it could be could have been something like that. It doesn't always have to be some global catastrophic yeah. weapon on a secret island somewhere. And, you know, it's... it's but, they need but, to reinvent the formula then because yeah, well, the, no, no, the, but I'm saying people think form- of Bond as the villain with the secret lair on an island. They, yeah, because yeah. they've done that a bunch of times, but they also did Casino Royale and they did like I said the um, Skyfall from Russia with the, the, from Russia so with much love. Like that. Um there's been you know, there's been more like espionage type missions. I mean it's it's But but in the last twenty five years, most of them have been these big yeah, you know, well, he's, he's the saving the world. Bond in film in the last in the in the last twenty five years is is Casino Royale. So partly because it was a new Bond and he was a great Bond. No, it's a great movie. It's a tight, and it's, it's a, a very pretty tight, tight story. It's yeah. not a big giant story. It's yeah. in, and the even the even the the bad guy in it is is more a threat to himself than you know. I mean, he's a. He's a but it's also terrorist. part of a bigger story. It's They're all under story. Spectre. Yeah, I mean, but, they, they, but that's the thing, Spectre. Is like the big bad guy. It's a big bad organization. It's MI6 versus Spectre. Who knows what they're going to do? I'm hoping they did what they did and have a plan for what comes next. Whether it's Elizabeth Hurley or or Lily Collins or Idris Elba or name some other English person. <laughs> I don't know what they got going on. I honestly, I I don't want to see any of that. I really don't. I mean, I just, I, I kind of feel like, you know, this is not, th- this is, this is a character. This is a literary character. This is character, cre- you know, was, he was created as a character in a novel. There were very specific characteristics of this person. If you're going to say, okay, now it's a woman, it's like, okay. I, Have I you I mean, seen any of what's sexist. going on in Hollywood in the last I know, but 15 I'm years? That's what, that's saying. what scares me. But, I don't want this, this to turn right. into the Star Trek Discovery of right. James Bond. And that, that's what I'm saying. And they don't have to. Okay? They don't have to do that. And and you know Yeah. Yeah. No. It's 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 yeah. I know you agree with I you feel that way and, and I'm not disagreeing with you, but I think our current studio heads, our current producers, our current crop of Hollywood elite don't think that way right now. The other they think they've with, got to turn things on its head for it to be relevant. And, and the, the, relevant this doesn't, is sell, owned relevant doesn't by, sell tickets. And we we know that. I mean, yeah. it's it's relevant divides people more than it than it, it unites people. And if this movie if this movie makes them money, they're not going to go far from the footprint of this movie. And the other thing is, this is not like a studio owned Barbara Broccoli, who, whose father was Cubby Broccoli, who. It's still in the same family that it was in 50 years ago, yep. 50 however many years ago. And, you know, it's not yeah. – I, yeah. I, I, I think they – The it's next the Bond is going to be a woman is, is a good good article, title. You know, it's, 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 it's good to and get it, a yeah. lot of comments on online, but they're not going to go there. They're, and they're, they shouldn't. I mean, fine. There should be good roles for women, no doubt about it, but – well, I mean, so I just looked it up on Box Office Mojo. It's it's made worldwide so far four hundred and forty nine million nine hundred and seventeen. This day and age, yep. it's a lot for this day and age. But I I'm looking to see if they have what the budget was four hundred and forty two million. <laughs> yeah, probably. With with marketing, it's probably close to two hundred million at oh, least, yeah. if not three hundred oh, million. Oh my god, it's more than that. So. But we're also in we're in like a three year cut your losses period here, where it's if, it, if honestly if you can break even in a movie right now, that was in that was in production before the current situation, and you keep the franchise alive, you're probably doing okay. Um, you know, maybe his soul passes to Anna de Armas, and <laughs> she becomes James Bond. I I could get um oh boy, I can get on board with that. 
Nice. I, I'm just really afraid. I honestly, I am really afraid we're going to start with like a badly disfigured Bond washing up on the shore <laughs> in, in Japan. And after surgery, he's going to look just like Tom Hardy or something like that. Um, it, it's $250 million budget and at yeah. least another $100 million in marketing. Of All right. So they made a couple hundred, $50 they million. Made 150. And, gonna, and it's not done yet. They're going to they're gonna make more money. Um, it, it's... Um, yeah. It's hard to believe it's been 15 years. It's crazy. Yep. Yep. Anyway. But in a, in a typical 15-year span looking at this franchise, do they do more than five movies in 15 years, or is that about the right It depends pace? what 15 years, because there's, it's been, there's been a lot of legal issues, place. and then there's been... It's like they, they were knocking them out about every 18 months, 16, there 18 was months back in the day. They uh, did. Right. Yeah, that, that's they what did, I'm feeling. Like, like three years between movies is is more than they used to do. Oh like. yeah, it's been it's been five years. Um, yeah, since this or more. Yeah, um, but, we, but there but was also, some like every year one would come out. Yeah, the, the Connery bonds were right on the. And this is the other reason. I mean, the reason he got out was not so much that he was tired of playing Bond. He was tired of that. Was all he was. You know, when you're doing a film a year. And these are all location shoots and all this. It, it kept him from doing other work. And, you know, if they were on every three-year schedule, he probably would have played, played Bond for another five, six years, um, but done the same number of films. So, so. so if you've seen it or plan to see it now that we've ruined it for you, <laughs> let us know what you think. So I, um, I want to just – before we go, I just want to go into one more thing. Um. There is there's an interesting tie-in to on his on Her Majesty's Secret Service here, um, and which was the other like aborted happy ending story. Um, they use the same theme music. Um, the the end is the um, the end of end music of this is we have all the time in the world the Louis Armstrong oh, really? song that was the that. theme was the the theme music from. Um, from On Her Majesty's Secret Service, which bizarrely, in the time that we've been doing this podcast, has risen from like the the low tier of Bond films to within the like top ten and and creeping towards the middle of people's top ten list of Bond films. It's very very interesting. That's what people say. Yeah, they like the movie. They didn't love the James Bond, but they like the movie. And, um, and that in in looking back, uh, the, a lot of people think that he actually didn't even do that bad a job. It was just people were not ready for somebody who was not Sean Connery. Yeah. Until he came back and did a crappy movie, and then they were like, "Okay, we're kind of done. <laughs> All right, we'll take somebody else. We'll take somebody yeah. else. Roger yeah. Moore looks good. Um, yeah. So. So. Anyway, you know what? I I I, I do think there's something to the fact that. My first Bond experience was Roger Moore, and I didn't. I had never seen a Sean Connery Bond movie until that podcast we did in 2013. So, like, I didn't grow up with them. I didn't see them. I, so maybe I would have had more affinity for it. I, and I like the Roger Moore movies, but it's a little campier, right? And maybe oh, yeah. if I had seen a different Bond as my starting point, I might have had more. I don't want to say love for the franchise. I like them, but just and, and, but you know, but the thing is so. Yeah. Okay. So Connery, when we were growing, Connery was the old Bond. Connery was the TV Bond. Okay, and and Moore was the Bond that you saw in the theaters. And yeah, well, it's funny because I remember. I mean, like I said, I I've seen even all the Connery ones. I wasn't born yet, but when even some came out, we'd go see double features of them. So I saw them in the yeah. theaters even before Roger Moore. And again. Roger, you know, Roger Moore came out. It was, I was six or no, seventy three. I was eight, so I feel like subconsciously I'm like, oh, here's a guy who's telling jokes and it's a little more lighthearted than this dude who's beating up women and raping them. And I don't, maybe I didn't put it together in my head. But <laughs> For your eyes only was the first Bond movie I saw. Yeah. Moore was my Bond because I think I could relate to him being a little more goofy, and I guess. Sean Connery was always like, and see, I saw them again. I saw them in parallel. It was like new Bond movies were more old Bond movies were were Connery, and the other thing too is the when a new more movie came out, 
they always replayed the Connery movies. So, you know, that that's when they get, they got more airplay on TV. And um, I don't know. I, I just I but I always saw them as two different things in that way. Um, yeah. If um, I don't I don't know if I ever need to go back and rewatch the Pierce Brosnan movies. Um, people say that the Timothy Dalton movies are not as bad as we remember. I've heard that too, and I have not gone back. To I have see not them either. Years. I, I've seen them. I saw it's them in the two. theaters. And 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 there should have been more, but there was legal issues. And then by that point, they went to they they went to. But I will say, I I just actually rewatched On Her Majesty's Secret Service. I like that movie better every single time I see it. Um, we're probably three years away from someone really effectively deep faking Sean Connery over George Lazenby, <laughs> and then it's all done. <laughs> there you um, go. That's all we need to do. It's it's uh, and he doesn't even do that bad a job in that. He really doesn't. He's actually, in some ways, better suited to that than than Moore was in the beginning. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Okie dokie. Um, next week we're going to do something Halloween next week. We don't yes. know what it is. Where we're committing because it, as you hear, it'll be two days before Halloween. We're going to dress up. I even try to get Barry to dress up, and maybe <laughs> we'll send. We'll definitely send pictures and we'll put it out on YouTube. Um, I don't. I'm committing right now. Okay, um, sure. I'll get one of those Squid uh, Squid Game masks. I don't even know what that is. So, have you watched it without? Any I am commentary? watching it. Yeah, I'm watching okay. it. I'm, I'm in. The this middle from of someone who still hasn't seen all the Bond films. I'm sorry. Yeah. Priorities. How Priorities. did you? How do you compare it to Tiger King? Up there, <laughs> you can't even. I mean, okay, I don't a, care. But the point is, you saw Tiger <laughs> King, but you haven't watched James totally Bond. Totally relevant question. Don't need the answer. <laughs> yep. Anyway. We'll figure all that stuff Squid out. Game Again, let us know if you've seen Tiger it, what you think. What do you think they're going to do next? I'm voting Daughter Grows Up, and her nickname is James. And we'll go from there. And it's played by Maisie Williams. No, I don't know who's <laughs> going to be. But some oh, young... young British actress three years from now. Oh, God, that's hard to say. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, well, I know she's not the right age, but I just like saying her name. Who? Hell okay. yeah, well. Also, I want to see the supercut, okay, in like split screen of Daniel Craig running and Tom Cruise running. Because I got to say, I also, I rewatched Casino Royale. He does a damn lot of running in these films. Oh, that um, one. On the special. rooftops. Yeah. On the rooftops. And, and I think, I think. And they broke. I would like to see what their, broke their, their, ankles. their combined running time is between those oh. film series. I guarantee there is a website that has total Tom Cruise running time <laughs> on the internet, and it's a ridiculous amount. Yeah. A ridiculous yeah. amount. Yeah. Um, Barry's looking it up right now. Um, yep. Yeah. But. Okay, here we go. Here we go. He's looking. We'll, we'll, uh, Oblivion's on a lot. Oh, That's you know, it flick. just talks about how many movies. It said how long have we seen Tom Cruise running, but it's about... I'll look for. I'm sure there. You're right. Oh, that that we'll, time is out there. It's it's. Yeah. We'll report on that next week. Yeah. And thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. <laughs>